right, so let's talk about making visuals for slides. Uh, this is something that I've just been practicing over the years and really trying to hone my craft, uh, just because I think a good visual can tell a, a, such a great story behind what you're presenting, and it can really help kind of underscore or underline the main issues that you want to talk about. Now, part of this is just conceptualizing what it is that you're talking about. So there's a lot of techniques around mind mapping and what's called giga mapping, where you can really map out the different concepts and ideas that you might be working with and that can really help visualize what you're you're trying to say and of course there's a whole field of design that works with things like infographics that'll help you realize how you can uh, design those uh, I, those that data in a way that is easy for people to understand and easy for people to grasp i'm not going to dig into that sort of thing right now what i want to do is give a couple ways in which i've created uh, slides i've created graphics on slides so people can get a better handle on uh, the ways in which you can create really interesting and engaging and, and useful presentations. So first thing I do is I toss out any templates. I really hate PowerPoint, Google Slide templates. I don't find them particularly useful because I often think they kind of trap people into one way of thinking or working when in fact what you really want to do with your slides is treat them like a canvas, like a blank slate where you can kind of articulate whatever it is that you want to say in a different ways and in different ways of working so one of the main ways I use to communicate on my slides is just to have a one or two words in the middle of a slide it really keeps things to the point and keeps things focused the other way I use is just a simple graphic to kind of evoke an idea or kind of keep as a backdrop behind what uh, what it is I'm doing now, if you've listened to the other uh, podcasts I did around presentations, you probably already see that in these slides here, I've kind of violated my own rule, which is don't use more than three to five words on a slide. Yes, so this is just a rule of thumb, and I don't always even follow my own rule. But the important thing that we uh, kind of talk about here is how we can create some of these graphics and these visuals. So first of all, get rid of your templates. Whatever template you're using, stop using it. Uh, once you've gotten rid of that, you can start from a blank slate. Now, I really like dark backgrounds with a lighter colored text. Now you want to make sure that there's some contrast here so people can actually see, especially the work you're doing uh, from far away can be really difficult to read or to understand if you're using really low contrast. So no gray on black or anything like that. Yellow on black, white on black works just fine. I like monochromatic pieces because it kind of gives you that real kind of, okay, this is a, a simple, easy to understand, easy to follow piece of work. Now, uh, in terms of graphics, an easy way of, of starting off is just to jump over to Google Images and just find whatever graphic you want to find. So I often just plug in basic keywords here and then see what's already been created. Now there's this whole issue about, around copyright, so follow whatever copyright rules are relevant for you and your work, but it can start you off in trying to understand and trying to see what are some common ways of visualizing the things that you're talking about. And then you can just copy and paste that over into your slide if you want to, or if that works for what you're doing. Uh, now that won't necessarily always fit in the kind of theme, the, co the color scheme that you have, but maybe you don't. Ma that doesn't matter to you so much, and you just want to kind of have a nice little graphic in there. Now, if you're going to do that, double check, make sure that the resolution for the graphic is good enough that it will actually fill up the whole slide. So in this case, uh, I have a picture here that's 2,000 by 740, 784 pixels. So I'm just going to copy this image. I'm going to create a new slide, and then I'm going to paste that image in there. I'm going to first get rid of these text templates now you'll probably automatically notice here that the image is a little bit uh, too big uh, for our uh, slide now one thing I always make sure I don't do uh, at least it's too big horizontally for our slide and the one thing I'd make sure that I don't do is start to uh, stretch that image it really can make the whole thing look distorted so I try to make sure that whenever I'm resizing it I'm resizing from the corners and not from from uh, the, the left or right or top or bottom. That'll make sure that everything stays uh, kind of uh, in shape and it doesn't get uh, skewed in any way. Now, uh, once you've had that centered, you might find that the top and bottom of the slide or the left and the right part of the slide, they don't match up uh, in the same way that the picture's dimensions match up. Now, this is easy to fix. You just have to change the background color and then suddenly, magically, everything's going to be fine. Now, I have a white uh, picture with a white background and that didn't quite fit 
on the slide, I made the uh, background of the slide white, and everything now looks kind of cohesive and coherent. Now, if for whatever reason you end up with a picture that doesn't have the same color as your background, say that picture is green or gray in the background, or maybe uh, here's a picture that's uh, orange in the background, now you may want to uh, still have things kind of look cohesive and look the same. So one of the ways I fix that is, uh, and now this picture is really too small uh, in terms of resolution for this slide, but we'll make it a little bit smaller so it doesn't get too grainy. And one of the ways you fix that is by finding out whatever color is being used in this picture and, uh, and matching that color to the background of the slide. So in this case, I'll just use this uh, widget. Uh, it's a, um, it's called Color Picker, it's for Chrome, and if you just hover over the color in the image, it'll give you the numeric code for that color. So in this case, the numeric code is F370022. So I'm just gonna take and make F370022 the background color. So I'll just go into custom color, and then I make F370022 my background click OK, done, and then I have a background color that kind of fits with the background color of this image. Now you'll probably uh, notice if you're watching this on YouTube that uh, the picture kind of then blends in with the background and it doesn't look great. So in this case, it probably wouldn't work, but in a lot of cases, it's gonna look really, really good because you're kind of then matching the picture with the background. Uh, so that's just a, a little tip to kind of get you uh, making your presentation slides look a little bit better, looking a little bit more interesting. Now, if you want to ante up and you really want to figure out how to do this well, one of the ways that I've had a lot of luck is using something called Figma. Figma is a graphic uh, design program. It's a web-based web program. It uh, really, really works well. And uh, it, the learning curve isn't too bad. I was able to learn it within a few weeks, but then I really kind of continued to up my ante and learn more and more about it. I'm not going to take you through everything on Figma because there's whole websites and whole YouTube channels dedicated to that. I'm just going to kind of show you a little bit about my process. Now, one of the key tools that I use in Figma is this grid. Now, this is the a grid is based on kind of the golden mean. So you're able to lay out your slides in a way that really uh, fits with uh, where the eye is automatically drawn to. And so then it's just a matter of kind of laying everything out according to where those uh, lines are, are kind of giving you some guidance or showing you where uh, you can place, uh, place different items on the slide. Uh, so this has really been helpful for me and then I just use the tools that are already in Figma and maybe import some images to make things look uh, even more uh, professional, make them look even more well designed. Another really great website that I've gotten a lot of use out of is called Noun. Uh, this is Noun Project. If you go to Noun Project, it's just a whole bunch of icons and you can type in whatever text you want to type into the search engine and it'll get you all kinds of really cool icons. Now, this is a uh, Noun Project that doesn't sponsor this at all. Uh, so I'm happy to tell you that I pay for a license for Noun because I find so much value in it. So then you can just download this uh, icon, whatever icon you've selected, as either a PNG file or an SVG file. Now here's a really quick note when you're creating the visualizations. Uh, if you go for a PNG file, sometimes, a lot of times, the background is invisible. And that can give you a really nice feel for your presentation because if the background's invisible, then you'll be able to see through that uh, image in some way, shape, or form. So maybe when you're searching Google Images, you want to just type in those three letters after the image, P and G, and see if you what else comes up. See if you can find a, a, a graphic that has a clear background in case this, that's what you want. The other website that I found a lot of great, great value for is unsplash.com. Unsplash is also not a sponsor of this uh, channel, but it does provide really great high resolution pictures that are also uh, open, uh, openly available. So there you can kind of use them as you as you will. So here I just threw flower into the search, uh, search bar and I got a lot of really beautiful high resolution uh, images for flowers. So this could really help you. Now you can take those images or icons and pull them into Figma and then mess around with them on whatever Figma board you're using, or you can pull them straight into your presentation software of choice, whether that's Google Slides or PowerPoint, mess around with them there. And that'll give you a really good uh, feel for how to create your visuals. Now, a note here on tables and 
graphs. Uh, a lot of times, academics especially, you'll publish an article and you'll have a table in that article or you'll have a graph in that article or maybe somebody else published it and you want to reproduce it in your slide because you want to point to something in that graph or in that visualization. Uh, don't, please don't. Just take a screen grab and paste that screen grab in and try to uh, kind of crop things out. It almost never comes out looking well. What I almost always try to do is to actually actually go into whatever presentation program I'm using and recreate, visually recreate the image that I'm trying to show. So if it's a model and it's just a series of bubbles that are connected somehow, I'll actually go into the presentation software. I'll create a whole bunch of circles and put text in those circles and create arrows that connect things and really take some time to again bring out the same color palette that you're using for your presentation. Make sure that the text is readable in the in each of the little bubbles. Make sure the bubble uh, the kind of um, the surround the, the line that draws around the bubble. I can't even remember what that's called. Uh, anyways, make sure that that's kind of uh, visible and it's not just a, a hairline uh, line. Um, and then it'll you know, give you the chance to really manipulate, change, tweak that visualization the way you want to. Uh, a lot of times, uh, other things that I see that are really, really problematic is uh, when people just take a big screenshot of a really complicated image and then throw that into the slide. Now, if you want your audience to actually care about that image, don't throw the whole thing in there. Or if you do, just throw it in as one slide and then zoom in on a specific part of that image that you actually want to talk over. So that's the audience isn't sitting there searching through this complex diagram trying to see what the hell you're talking about. You've actually given them, no, this is the piece of the diagram that matters the most. That's why I've highlighted it and I've blown it up. Um, it's really, really critically important. Now, and the last thing I want to remind everybody about here is accessibility. Make sure that your slides are accessible. And what that means is if you're using text, make sure the text is a big enough size so that people can read it from the back of the room. Uh, I think people miss this. It's just a fundamental accessibility issue. And if you make those uh, font large enough, then you'll be able, people will be able to read the text that you put on your slide. Make sure that you're using high contrast elements almost all the time, unless you have a very specific reason not to go with white on black, uh, black on white, yellow on black, black on yellow, so that people can read and understand what you're trying to present. Uh, and I think the last uh, little thing in terms of accessibility is the images that you use. Uh, if you go into the, uh, the settings of your presentation software, it'll give you probably a, what's called an accessibility checker. And one of the first things it'll look for is, is there any language that you've used to describe the image? that are in your slides. So make sure you go in and add what's called alternative text to each of your images so that if someone is looking at your images and they're not quite sure what you're talking about, they'll be able to access that information in uh, what's called the alternative text of that image. Now, let's just break this down into a couple key takeaways. Number one, uh, Stop using templates. Make your own template. It'll serve you the rest of your life. Uh, number two, if you're making things in a, a presentation software, keep things simple. Keep it basic. Keep it easy for people to understand and follow. Uh, number three, if you want to start upgrading your work, take a look at some graphic design software like Figma, uh, for example, and start pulling pictures out of uh, really good quality repositories for icons or for uh, high resolution images. There's plenty of useful ones out there. And number three, double check your accessibility of your content. Make sure that everything you've created is accessible. There are accessibility checkers in every major presentation software. You can just run that checker and follow the instructions. It's really not that hard. It'll take you another five minutes and it'll suddenly open up your presentation to be usable by so many more people. Good luck.